and gentlemen, the books is in. The books are in. Yep. They in. Mm-hmm. Here. Peace, 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 peace to everybody. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could share the show on Facebook, but it wouldn't let me. So ETM Hotel, Rennie Sean, welcome to peace. My name is Sean. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Nah, I wasn't talking at first. I was trying to share. Um, This is impromptu. Yeah, we're going to get straight to some little West African history. So we're going to talk about Balad Al-Sadan, the land of the blacks, and or the Badan, the whites. Um... I wrote it. I wrote about it in chapter two of Spears of the Masi. I also wrote about the uh, scholastic accounts of Leo Africanus and some misinterpreta- uh, misinterpretations and concepts of Leo Africanus that are questionable accounts. And we need to weigh his work on the scholastic scale and see if it can stand scrutiny and survive it. You know, so that was the motivation for my chapter, one of my two chapters in volume two was to dig into the historical perspectives of Leo Africanus and um, how our brothers and sisters and um, tend to try to use Leo Africanus as a, a substantial source for some of the claims that they make and or beliefs that they are, uh, that they, that they hold and uh just want to get into that but uh hold on real quick what up panther peace what's going on bro man chilling man just wanted to hop on real quick talk a little crazy a little little history um get into the you know uh land of the blacks indeed indeed yeah how you doing well man so, so ready for tomorrow? I don't know, man. My day, Amazon playing with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they all do, man. That's how, that's man, how they do. man. Yeah, they're doing that to everybody uh, around this time. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, man. So um, I was on another channel, just kicking tires, board. Um, you know, 
uh, this brother named Gideon was trying to interject the Jews in the West Africa. Um, the way that he was actually trying to do it was to like, like as if it was a like a heavy presence. Um, you know what I mean? Like historically, what we hear about Jews in West Africa are later on, but from from a trade perspective, you know, wherever the money at uh, and or the transatlantic, they start to appear. Mm. Um, uh, okay, that's Kofi. No, it's not. It's me. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So you you know you get that perspective and things like that going down, and we uh, we kind of get a miss a misinterpretation of history or how it really should be. And I was, you know, really talking about it because uh, one of the main sources people use again is Leo Africanus. And, you know, my, like I, like I did in volume two, that argument in volume two is like, we need to, you know, really weigh his work. Um, we need to really deal with all of his accounts. And the historiography of what the things that he actually said, not only him, but other Arabs. And, um, you know, they they talked in a kind of way. Leo Africanus, we, we talking about the same Leo Africanus that conquered North Africa? Uh, suppose <laughs> the historian, the one who changed his name was so-called the Pope changed his name to Africanus. You know, at first he was... Mm -hmm. Al Wazan, Al Hassan Wazabi. Yeah, yeah, weird ass name. Yeah, and then the Pope gave him a name, and, and he ended up being Leo Africanus. It was Al Al Hassan Ibn Muhammad Al Wasan Al Fasi. Yeah, him. Um, and a lot of history is on his shoulders. A lot of uh, attestations are considered to be like the law based on his interpretations of uh, West African history and or uh, the geographical locations of West Africa. And um, you're, uh, I remember you was like, brush, do you have to exhaust it like this as far as going over the, you know, those questionable accounts of Africanus? <laughs> Um, yeah, unfortunately, because the same arguments are going to continue to uh, to come up. So, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. So, so like I was saying, Gideon, he was using, he was trying to use Africanus as a segue into West Africa with these Jews, and then he was trying to say that there were white Jews in West Africa. And then what I was saying is, we have to be more clearly about time period. Because we know when the uh, Portuguese um, come into West Africa, you know, they don't look nothing like us. They don't look like the Badan. You know what I mean? They don't look like, you know, when I say Badan, that's the Berber looking, mm -hmm. Arab looking person. And many people understand that uh, the translation for Badan is white. No, nah, they didn't look like the Portuguese, the Greco-Romans, or none of that. that none of them Europeans. They didn't look like them at all, right? Uh, they were more like Arabized looking, but they did not uphold to the cultural traditions of the blacks in the land. So Gideon is, uh, from his argument, is trying to use it to infuse the Jews and try to say that, the, you know, these white people and all of that was in the area as well. And I'm like, uh, no, you have to go and you have to understand what they're saying. So he tried to use Aldrisi, who is writing, um, who is writing about these uh, white people, supposedly white people in Cameroon. Now, if Aldrisi uses the word, but then he is, he is specifically speaking about people who don't practice the cultural traditions of the Cameroon. The people in Cameroon, depending on which location in Cameroon, because, you know, you got uh, different tribes and things of that nature that are also present in Cameroon. So this is where history gets misconstrued. Now, if his interpretation of Leo Africanus' work is that, then he should have he should have cross referenced Leo Africanus' account. You know what I mean? Because most people don't know this, but Leo Africanus, um, he specifically. Thanks to Askia Muhammad, 
is is ruling over a, Ga a Ghanaian empire. Mm -hmm. Askey and Muhammad is uh, in a whole other place. So if that's his his understanding of uh, West Africa and its geography or location, then then he unfortunately he got that wrong. He don't know where he is to even say that. But he's supposed to be this astute geographer that has traveled uh, traveled the globe. And I mean, uh, and you talk Africa. about that book that he wrote, right? Description of Africa. Mm hmm. Yep. The description. Of, uh, yeah. That that's the book. That that's the the issue right there that that book because when he goes in and he starts describing west africa he has uh he has messed things up oh peace to brother Haas. um i don't know if you already subscribed man but subscribe to the to the channel man you know what i mean like it share it i got him confused earlier i was thinking about scopio africanus so oh yeah oh yeah freaking africanus so Leo Africanus is a different person than Scopio for the, you know, listen, listening audience. Um, like like uh, Brother Sean said, he had an Islamic birth name that the Pope changed. He he has a very interesting, uh, very interesting life. The dude was all over the place. I mean, all <laughs> over Africa, all over. I mean, all over the place. I mean. From the Nile Valley to the Sunrise to mm -hmm. Morocco, to, I mean, he was everywhere. Like, <laughs> right. His most notable work is the description of Africa. I haven't read the book, but um, I guess there's some claims in there that's uh, you know, has brought into question the accuracy of the book. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and it's been challenged a few times, actually. Um, although yeah. for its time, it was the it was the best thing since sliced bread. I mean, for its time, especially like in Europe, that book was the juice, you know, because uh, it was at a time period that you know it wasn't that much known about Africa, and people had just really started coming over to Africa like that. So you know, that was that was a book that was used. Uh, I believe to try to look into Africa before, hmm. excuse me, before um, the big time slave trade really kept off. Mm hmm. And this is where a lot of the confusion comes in at too, because he was writing as if he was the authority, or for some people, like an eyewitness to some of the things that were taking place in West Africa, and he was not. And um, and that's when uh, that's when we see that there's errors in his work, in that work specifically, uh, because he got to, you know, messing things up as far as the geographical location. He also compared the Nile Valley to uh, the Great West African River. Uh, shoot! Wow, as soon as I was getting ready to say it, it just slipped my mind. Is it Niger? Yeah, Niger. River Niger. And you remember when I um I did a video on it, calling it the um uh some kind of Arabic name that they gave it, but that's also that name comes out of his description, and it comes from mm -hmm. Arab uh, Arabs naming it um that. Hold on, let me tell you exactly what the name is. That's where that weird name come from. But um, I'm gonna walk you out. I'm gonna walk you out through a little bit in just a second. So I think most people they want to like they just really want to talk about West Africa, and that's cool because that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be talking about our direct home. What was what was but what was the claim from the from the show you were on about so they was just saying that the jews yeah the jews were, in, were in africa at some point yeah um he's trying to he's trying to give them validity like they always been in the presence or something like that and i'm like i don't <clears throat> i gotta hear he didn't give his full argument because of course um the allotted time for him to be able to give a full argument is not gonna be there for that 
but apparently he has some kind of presentation of where he's making this uh, particular claim. And uh, I would be interested in hearing the whole totality of it. And he tried to use Arabic sources as uh, to help corroborate um, his bias conclusion. And I think really that's what he did. I don't think he cross-referenced anything. But yeah, it's called the Nil Al Sudan, and that's basically denial of the blacks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what Arab scholars call it, you know, the uh, Nil Al Sudan. So you know, he confuses the um, the Nile River with the Niger, and, and he mixes up, you know, geographical locations for many West African, uh, you know, like. For instance, Ghana, you know, like well, like Songhai, Mali, all of them over there. He, he gets to mixing up places, mm. uh, people, most importantly. But yeah, so what I wanted to kind of do was just walk people through West Africa um, before Arabs, right? Um, that's been a problem for many people to naturally understand is what was West Africa before Arabs because, you know, they talk about Arabs bringing writing and things of that nature into it. And then that's when things began to flourish. But actually, um, civilizations were thriving in West Africa, you know, pre-Islamic era. And resources have always been there. So how would it not thrive now? The trade routes were not uh, plentiful um, with the incoming of the Arabs, but they had trade routes. And no, um, when I let y'all read the books uh, from Spears the Pen to, to really get into the argument, if if Arabs actually came in and started the <laughs> started these empires and so on and so forth, but before uh, the Arabs actually come into West Africa. Uh, traditionally, you have archaeological evidence that spreads out throughout West Africa. You find uh, in, for instance, one of the great digs in uh, Iwu, Iliro, I think I might be saying it incorrectly, but uh, it's basically in Nigeria, uh, where you find like the oldest uh or digs, archaeological digs that that sprout up and show, you know, hey, some people was living in this area at this time. And it goes back specifically, you know, about between, and I'm 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 not spot on because I'm not sourcing it up, but uh I would say close to 10,000 years, but also in the Cameroon around somewhere around 8,000 years, you see uh, people living in the Cameroon, and then, you know, you kind of go on up, and you don't want to call Morocco, West Africa, but to the north of it is the oldest going on right now as far as argument regarding human pop. So you also see uh, there's an archaeological dig where there's a boat or canoe, well, let's just say a canoe, uh, that that pops up. That canoe is dated to be somewhere around 10,000 years old. Um, these are intricate pieces to a puzzle that has yet to be put together wholeheartedly by historians and um, and oh, you know, just archaeologists, so to say. They're still writing a story about West African history. And uh, but one thing that will have to be naturally included in that is to say of the all the West Africans. You finna say something? No, I was just listening, brother. OK, so I think that is it's very important to know how history actually started in West Africa. Um, you could deal with migrations, um, which would then take you into the different cultural perspectives of uh, each clan, each tribe, and um, specifically get into the oral tradition. Now, many people will throw away oral tradition, but if archeology span and other evidence, I mean, uh, other sciences back it up, then you would have to admit, uh, 
admitted into the argument and accepted. However, um, you have to also have the mindset of 600 or a thousand years ago or uh, something like that. Um, how honest was people then versus how honest people are now? Then people were more honest, more stern. Their natural world dictated their circumstances. So wherever they sprouted up at and, and began to settle uh, on these lands along uh, the uh, the Atlantic, all the way on down into Central <clears throat> Central Africa and so forth, uh, they began to see things from their perspective based on the pureness of their word. Now, you might think, Sean, what are you talking about? The pureness of their word, like people didn't lie then. Well, people's word was their bond. And uh, these lessons were, were learned extensively from elders. And the traditions are passed down through the elders, which were the teachers, which had, you know, the promise of the people um, that they that they seem to educate. Right. So when they when they talk to these people or well, the, the kids and they're teaching them these habits and they're showing them the ways of the world, they're going through rites of passages, they're going through their ceremony, you know, the, the cultural uh, perspectives that make up the whole of the people. Um, and each place that we want to call, if we want to talk about now today, we want to say Gambia, we want to say Senegal, Cameroon, you know, Togo. We start seeing all these similarities because culturally these similarities showed their their understandings of the world. They saw pretty much some of the same things um, Now they might speak a little bit different or they might have a word today. There might be a word that may be different or uh, distinctively different. But all in all, when you get back to the uh, I guess us, the English translation of the word, it allowed them an opportunity to uh, to actually draw a conclusion showing that okay this this means a bird all right and this and, and this particular language and then the and so on and so forth so long story short the tongue was more truthful the history the oral history that was there was more reliable now if you know over time something is going to be embellished uh when you when you interject or you add in the jelly into the West African history, which is the griot. To some of y'all don't know what the jelly is. The griot, as they told stories specifically regarding things that dealt with pretty much the kinship, the kingship, or you know, tribal affairs or things of that nature when they were going around historically, the jelly or the griot didn't have any ties to that of which they spoke to, uh, spoke of. So like the jelly could be from outside the clan. You know what I mean? And he would come in, but he would know something about the clan and he would come in and he would speak to that. And lessons was learned through that as well. It was only then um, when the coming of the Arab. That you would start seeing a change of the guard and a, an actual perspective uh, of not trusting people's word anymore. Uh, things began to be a little bit more embellished. Writing would come. Um, certain other people's cultural influences would dictate change. And then you would see, start seeing a huge mix up. So I don't think that we can fathom 600 years ago. We can't even fathom 100 years ago, you know, as far as slave, you know, how, how our uh, grandparents, great grandparents went through slavery. But what I'm trying to tell you is that for everybody tuned in and listening, a thousand of 400 or 600 years ago, people really stood on their word. So that's what makes the authenticity of old tradition uh, in West Africa unique among its people. Now, I can't speak for, you know, uh, the Levant or anything outside the continent. Um, I'm generally focused on how old tradition settled the ways of the world in West Africa. Now, what's going on? What's uh, Sutet? I see T'Challa on. I'm gonna let you uh, go on just a second, T'Challa. But what I'm really trying to get people to understand is that to the Badan, I mean, to the Sadan or the Balad El Sadan, the land of the blacks, 
people that came from other places, they did not have the same cultural identity as them. So when you see Badan, or which translate out to mean whites in history by these Arabs, they are specifically speaking and telling us that no, these people that we're calling the Badan just didn't have the cultural perspective and ideology as that of the Sudan people that they say that's in the land of the blacks. That has to be taken into account when you look back at Aldrisi's account of the people in the land of the blacks, uh, Khaldun's account, uh, Bakari's accounts, all these Arabic scholars who would then make up another argument that Brother Sue take, and I think myself I made a couple of times, is how arrogant and racist these people, uh, these Arab scholars were regarding the blacks. And one of the biggest contentions goes to this point of who are the lamb lamb, the tam tam, and so on and so forth. Now, when people start coming in and naming other people, these people are foreign to the land. When they, when you hear or you when you're reading like UNESCO accounts, if you're reading the UNESCO books uh, specifically, and I'm gonna give it to you. Uh, if you read UNESCO Volume Three, um, I can't think of the chapter right now. But in Volume Three, you start to see in Volume Three the Lamb Lamb and the Tam uh, and the Tam Tam up here. If, but if you go back to the earliest Arabic scholars that's writing uh, uh, with the Fatish and the, uh, the Tariq al Sudan, you start seeing it. You, you will see the Lamb Lamb or the Tam Tam appear there. These are Arabs distinctively trying to separate two people that might live across the river <laughs> from one another or, you know what I'm saying, one in the desert, uh, well, not in the desert, so to say, but one in, let's for instance, uh, in Timbuktu and then one in Mali. Like, you know, they don't dress and look the same, so they can't be the same people. So we got to call one of them Lam Lam and one of them Tam Tam. We don't know who they are really. So that's how they actually did that. Then when they were being more, when Arabs were being more descriptive about uh, people that would go deep into forestry, they would say they were well less or, or closer to the, you know, to the equator. They wore less clothes. They sharpened their teeth. They looked like cannibals. These are the distinctions and the ways that Arabs actually wrote about our ancestors not understanding their cultural identity or any of their traditions. And then this will take us back to their, their beliefs or their practices, their traditions, how they saw the natural world, how they deified things in their natural world, how they observed the natural world, pay homage to the ancestors, pour libations, made sacrifices, and then would inherit that culture and, and, bring, and, and bring it forth into a whole another area distinctively across West Africa, whether you were Fulani, Hausa, whether you were Yoruba, whether you were Igbo, you know, whether you were Akan, it didn't matter. Siri, Wula, it, it didn't matter. You you go and you sweep West Africa. You start to see how they how the cultural, I mean how the, the cultural perspectives of that natural world and how they deify things was so transparent within itself that it was entrenched, it was lived, it was every it was every single day. So when these people come in and they start trying to implement, this is my point, when they come in and they try to implement or infuse Jews, uh, Arabs, um, Christians, when they try to infuse all these three distinctively Abrahamic beliefs into West African traditions and culture, it immediately is separated because one, it's either convert, if these people are either converts, two, you don't see it in their art, you don't see it in their song, you don't see it in their dance, which would be their culture and their traditions. So distinctively, we can draw an honest conclusion based on how these people have always identified themselves before foreign people came into West Africa. Now, one thing that I will say, when Killmonger's Corner drops, volume two, 
when it drops, I'm only specific, uh, specifically speaking about one of the one of the chapters that I, I mean, uh, yeah, one of the articles that I wrote in, in in the journal. In one of the journals, what I tried to do was was introduce people to West Africa from a colorful way, just to pique your interest. I need y'all, whoever's listening, to go support Black Panther's book, the journal. Okay, he worked real hard on the journal, like he did on the first one. He came out with the second one is available. I think Tyler's uh, got some in there too. Kofi's got some in there. You know, uh, as always, Panthers connected. He gonna have some scholarly, uh, some scholarly works in there, interviews, artwork, so on and so forth. I need y'all to 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 get this. What I want y'all to do is see, read. Feel, think, touch this work for your sake, your kids' sake, and the future of how we should view things. Because not only what I wrote, but what everybody wrote that participated in this collective work will give you West Africa. You will see West Africa. You're going to continue to see West Africa. This whole channel is about West Africa. But we also don't leave out other parts of Africa. So when people want to infuse the Abrahamic faiths and, and, and customs and, and imp, imprinted in places where we know they weren't there, like they like Jews in Timbuktu. Living there, doing business, doing all of these things at what time period will be the next question. And then we will have to corroborate whether it's Hunwick which is a reliable source um, because I've sourced the Hunwick several times and the Hunwick's got a book regarding it um, or, or someone else. We have to really scrutinize everything because what are we saying? What is Hunwick actually saying about these Jews' presence? You know what I mean? Yeah, they was coming down from Morocco and they was coming down into Timbuktu. They wanted to do business. And yeah, Askia Muhammad didn't want Jews in the presence doing business or nobody doing business with the Jews or the Berbers in Timbuktu. He trying to run all of them out. But what people don't know about Timbuktu is that it was actually inhabited by Tureg. The Tureg did not look anything like the people that we know. They were pretty much the Badan Tureg, which is what you see in Libya. I'm they were the Timbuktu. Right. I, exactly. I know you sick. <laughs> you sick of it. I'm a little sick of it too because what makes it so much more historical <laughs> over everything else that's going on? You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it, let's, let's be honest, man. People just look at the structure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's let's just be honest because because nobody reads anything about tempo too. Because if yeah. they did, they'd be like, oh, this. This is not what, what it is. Timbuktu is used as a self-esteem builder for black people. Because all you hear about is, well, you know, they had a university at Timbuktu and it's one of the oldest universities in the world. That's all you hear. Nobody talked about what they were teaching there. Nobody talked about the people that were teaching. Like None of that. Like, Timbuktu is just like a, a checkpoint. On, on somebody's list of things that African people in America can claim and say, oh, we did that. And that's yeah. all they use it for. And, and it's just, it's one of those African facts. Are we going to study African facts or are we going to study African history? Because a lot of people just study African facts so they can just recall them when they need them when somebody say African people ain't shit. <laughs> that's yeah. really what they use it for. They don't really study the culture. They don't even get into the weeds and found out what happened at Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. At what time period did those original African people lose control? And it turned into an Islamic cultural hub, so to speak. I'm telling you right now, anybody listening to this, if you really start reading about Timbuktu, you're going to be disappointed uh, unless you are of the Islamic religion uh, then you will probably be filled with great pride. But other than that, you're going to be disappointed. Yep. I agree with that assessment. 
and um really primarily because of everything that actually transpired yeah it was it wasn't a popular trade hub early on in history like people seem to romanticize it um you know we have to be truthful it, it's it became a popular place not because it just uh the trade routes had changed and shifted due to the arab uh you know the the inhabitants of arabs coming into west africa but you know when they started like you just said it goes back when we started building structures in that area because of the influence of islam and um you had many many people building these uh mosques and things of that nature and the educational systems there you know the educational systems was primarily about uh let's face it it was about islam it was really arabic headed into islam, art, islam theology islam yeah. religion, islam all the time and when i say islam i mean every type of muslim for miles came through timbuktu yep we talking about from Egypt, from Mali, from Morocco, from I mean, just all of them were there, and it was like a, a, a you know, Islamic university. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Those people weren't teaching African art and African theology, and Af no, they was teaching Islamic cultural norms, mm -hmm. Islamic cultural philosophy, Islamic thought. All Allah all the time, praying five times a day, praying to the east. That's what they was teaching. So, I mean, if that's your thing, hey, you're going to be, you should study Timbuktu. But if that's not your thing, you want to study African history from the traditional African cultures, Timbuktu is not going to be high on your list when you get into it. I don't even talk about Timbuktu to people. <laughs> Yeah, I avoid the, the subject honestly because we have this romanticized view of what it was, and that's not what it was. It's not like Egypt when they were, you know, at Luxor and Karnak, you know, teaching their stuff. It's not like that in Timbuktu. Mm hmm. And one of the many influences of the Arab, and I, uh, I think I was sharing this in the, in the monster chat with my brothers, but I'm going to say it here. Uh, this is how they view things like man is essentially ignorant and becomes learned through acquiring knowledge. I think many of us would agree with that. But then it goes on to say we have already explained that man belongs to the genius of animals and that God distinguished him from them by the ability to think which he gave man and through which man is able to arrange his actions in an orderly manner. This is the discerning intellect or when it helps him to acquire from his fellow men of knowledge of ideas and things that are useful or detrimental to him. It is the experimental intellect. Um, perception of the existent things as they are, whether they are absent or present, it is a speculative intellect. This is uh, Imun Khaldun's work. And basically, this is how they viewed the intellect. I'm saying that to, to get right back to Timbuktu because in the mosque and all of those stuff, it what would what, what make it interesting to people who are interested in, in that particular area because when Arabs initially uh, began to come on the scene, they were illiterate. They couldn't read, nor could they write. They entrusted Christians and Jews to write the Quran. Christians and Jews to write the Quran. So later on, uh, prophets, they, they label people prophets based on their intellect. If you had uh, the intellectual prowess to convey certain type of information they would deem you a prophet it was later on when science became a heavy influence among the arab population when they looked to kemet and they saw that science was so astounding in this particular area that they began to 
use that knowledge or that discernment and master the reading and writing. And, and then it became influenced into the Islamic practice to study more. But this was the study of not only just uh, certain particular sciences, but the theological perspective, which was infused. So now when you look at Timbuktu or the construction of Timbuktu, it is set up specifically to include, peep this, the institution of scientific instruction for pretty much Muslims from the Arab worldview. This is why all this validity and stuff of uh, Timbuktu comes in at because of how it looked and how it was viewed. So everywhere you see yeah. a mosque, pseudo city, because anytime you try to mix yeah. Arab religion with science, it, it don't go together. It's not a perfect fit. Yeah. I, I don't say that, you know, to offend, but it, it doesn't. It just doesn't fit, you know. A lot, I mean, the earth is described in the Quran as a, as a bed that you lay on and the mountains are, are spiked. That means it's flat. You don't, you don't lay on curves. <laughs> you know, that's not, that's not going to cut it with science. You know, it, it's seven heavens in the Quran and, and the first heaven starts with at the stars. Well, we've been there now. Mm -hmm. we, we, we know it ain't nothing there. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be a, a fit. It's not going to be a good fit. I mean, I look at Timbuktu as the House of Wisdom Part Two. That's a good perspective. That's that's basically what I what I look at. And and if anybody doesn't know, you know, what the House of Wisdom is, uh, you put that right in Google, right in Wikipedia, read about it. House of Wisdom coming out of uh, or basically also known as the Grand Library of Baghdad. And that's when, you know, they describe it as an Islamic golden age. You know, that's when they were translating uh, all types of texts. So I look at it as that. But the House of Wisdom was probably better. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. Because I was deciphering Medunetra at the House of Wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, man. Peace, peace to y'all brothers on the panel, man. Peace to everybody in the chat. Um, yeah, Timbuktu is one of the things or one of the places most romanticized by black people that we don't know nothing about. <laughs> like, <laughs> like most people don't even know the settlement of Timbuktu was even founded by Berbers in eleven uh, eleven hundred eleven hundred CE. You know what I mean? It started as a a storage spot. You know, it was a spot where the, where these uh, Tuareg Berbers would store their uh, their trade materials, and then it turned into a, a trade center. You know, a, a trade hub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so we not only, never, not only store the trade stuff, but then they would they would seldom leave or vacate the premises. When people would, when other people would appear in the land, and then when they left, the people that came into the land to run them off, they would return back. Yep. And a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of the Mali Song High Kings, they had problems and issues with them because they weren't keeping it as Islamic as these Berbers wanted them to. You know what I'm saying? So you see people running up in there, going ham in them like on them like a a skill Muhammad. You know what I'm saying? You see uh, other kings and other monarchs going up in there, laying them down because they not feeling. It. You know what I'm saying? And and these Berbers wasn't feeling them unless you getting down with Islam and you getting down with it their way. Yeah, you couldn't go to that bush. <laughs> but um, they also like the the uh Ibon, well Caldoon also says this is what he said about Cairo. He says, from his perspective, this is where they start understanding the validity of science. And then <laughs> uh we at this time noticed that science and scientific instruction exist in Cairo and Egypt because the civilization is greatly developed and its sedentary culture 
has been well established for thousands of years. He pluralized that and says thousands of years. Therefore, the crafts are firmly established there and exist in many varieties. One of them is scientific instruction. So they, when, I, when I said that they start trying to mimic certain things, that's what I mean by mimic certain things. And so they wanted to make the mistake of infusing their theology into the scientific field. So when you when you look at the history or you, you get into specifically Timbuktu and you you know you start seeing calendars or you start seeing writings or you start seeing all this particular stuff. And then I believe, you know, uh not believe, and then you know they start saying other things, culture, they don't really talk, they don't talk about the culture traditions. Everything is Islamic there. You know what I mean? Forget everybody that's African that's been right there in that place longer than they have. You know, even the the, uh, the earliest inhabitants who have came and went. Uh, everybody that's there in that area now, and this is it's this big trade center. None of the things that that held people whole that was in the surrounding communities existed in Timbuktu. You know, so you. You you got to look at that history, you know, back to like what Ben said. You just got to look at it like that. You know, for some people it might be a good thing for other people. It might be a disappointment. Um, but we have we have overly romanticized it. Um, when we talk about when we talk about, you know, like the some of the Askias or just some of the Mansas, um, you know, in history, when we talk about Mali. We really, you know, some of them are romanticized. Well, not really some of them are romanticized, but one is held in high regard. We're not gonna do this again tonight, man. <laughs> I ain't I ain't gonna do it. No, 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 I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say I'm just gonna leave it like that in high regard. And then when we when we go, the place is more astute. You know, when we when we talk about the uh I think Brother Ben attested it because we had this conversation um, when you talk about the cultural perspectives of of the Akan. Ben, you you said this to me. You was like, you know, that's that's one of them that's untouched, so to say. You know, like yeah, man, they uh they did it the right way as far as their um as far as expanding, you know, to America. Um, you know, aside from, you know, a few isolated people, it all comes from one guy, uh, Nana Yao Opare Denizulu, who went back to Ghana and brought it, you know, during, uh, the late seventies and the eighties. And, uh, you know, people start opening up their own temples here in America because of his efforts. But, but it came from one source. It, it was like drumline, one band, one sound. So the Akom tradition here in America is a lot, uh, it's a lot more structured. It's a lot, uh, I guess the term would be uh, pure uh, as far as it direct lineage to the continent than some of the other uh, traditions you see um, in here in America, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, um, a lot of our brothers and sisters today are uh Islamic converts, um, which initially started with trade um wholeheartedly. And um no said something important. He was like they want him to 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 amp up the Islam, you know, they Islam the way they want it, because Africans good for that, man. Africans is good for that. anybody that visited Africa, man. Let me tell you something. Islam ain't the same in Africa as it is in, in Saudi. And yeah. neither is Christianity. It's Africanized. <laughs> it it is, and they don't they don't hold it in the same regard as other people. They play like they do. But they don't because you have so many people that just, you know, put on a front 
and that's just what it is. Uh, <laughs> and and they'll still engage in the stuff, you know, their native tradition, but still go to the church. You know, if you tried to do that, you know, in America, you would get chastised. You know, you would get ridiculed. You would get, you know, all types of angry people coming up at you. But in Africa, it's just accepted. It's okay. You want to be a Christian in the morning, in the bush at night? That's your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, I can you know. attest to that, fellas. Like the tour, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. The chop. Uh, peace to you fellas on the panel and uh, everybody that's tuned in to the great bill. Um, yeah, I kind of want to, I want to touch on what was just said, tying it into what Sean was saying when I first hopped on here. Um, I mean, let me just give you a couple of examples, right? Because demonstration beats conversation. I'm in West Africa all day long musical traditions with the jellies i can name you five jelly last names right now that dealt with the sir people from what we call present day guinea west africa on the borders of mali with that trade route between where, where guinea borders senegal and right there in that special sweet spot where the bambara the mandinka and the sir were playing the same rhythms didn't say nothing about no Musa. <laughs> oh, 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 here we go. We ain't going now. We ain't going now. We ain't going now. We ain't going now. Musa off limits. Here yeah. we go. That's a spear. <laughs> Musa is off limits. Here we go. Uh, he didn't bring oh, uh, oh. it. Get volume three. We ain't speaking about Musa. Get him. Get volume three. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I, I can look. Okay, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. I'm gonna leave Musa alone. I'm gonna do yeah, this. Keep him out of this. Let me, let me do this for the people. Um, okay, you got. I'm gonna go with because somebody asked me the other day. Because I always ask the question, name me. I like the number five, and I always like to say, name me five African people, foods, etc. So let me do this right quick. Sir, Mendenyi, Mandinka, Susu, Tureg, Traore, Bambara. Now, hold on. Let me do this. Um, Konyate, Giabate, Kulibali. Now let me do this. Keita, Bangora. Okay. If you're going to talk about West Africa respectfully, and I'll go ahead and mute back out, not to haul the mic, I'm going to need you to go ahead and deal with any of what I just said. Tell me who are people. Tell me who are ethnic groups. Tell me who are names. Tell me that when we deal with West Africa. I don't want to hear about Timbuktu because I don't have a rhythm for Timbuktu either. Timbuktu is not talked about within Jembe culture in West Africa, within Sabar culture in West Africa, within Kutiro culture in West Africa, Senegambia, Senegal. First of all, Senegal has umpteen traditions all to itself, just like any of the other countries in that area. You got Sabar tradition, and then in the Tambacunda region of Senegal, the eastern half, you have a lot more of the mixture that you'll see where Jimbe is there. And there's that mixture that I'm talking about. I don't hear nothing about Timbuktu. I don't have a rhythm for Timbuktu. I don't have a rhythm praising um, trade with foreigners like that. Jembe culture is one of those things where the Africans are very much having their own deity in the bush and they playing their own music that ain't got nothing to do with Allah making nothing for them. It's the Numu blacksmiths. There's those blacksmiths again. Right. That Ogun energy. They deal heavy with that. And 
there's the bush and then there's the collective the participation the rest of us that's it and any deity that they talking about is something tangible very real in their reality that they interact with on a daily basis it's an en energy that they're interacting with and energy can be brother black panther sutek everybody listening on this panel sean myself we're all energy an entity in Africa can be the wind itself, Brother Black Panther, the food that he ate, and the money that he pays the white man to be able to live and to be on this panel. That's all the deity in one. And we'll sing a rhythm about that, but we won't talk about a foreign entity that civilized Africans that showed them how to be civilized so that they can get into heaven somehow from a you know to please a prop like we don't we don't have those songs so uh what's the name of uh Mansa musa song again i didn't hear it <laughs> oh man oh man, <laughs> man. <I bet. laughs> volume three Oh, uh, who Ogun has been colonized by Tariq Nasheed? Oh boy, yeah, uh, I saw that bullshit he been doing, uh, and that—that's—that's that's what I mean by Africa facts. We just learned something about Africa just to, you know, sell some T-shirts or tell some people how big and bad we are, and I Ogun you all this other stuff. And, and, and it's sad, man. It's it's really sad. He don't know shit about Ogun. I I will say this: all the little videos he puts up, and he's you know, hashtag Ogun, whatever. He is right in that estimation, uh, because Ogun is always present when there is a fight. Uh, that is what is said. Um, so. In that estimation, you know, he's he's not wrong in that estimation. I don't think he knows that, but he's not wrong. Um, Somebody told me I belong to the house of Ogun, brother Ben. Who is this? Somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, first of all, let me clarify. They are not a Babalao. Uh, then they, they, they can't it, tell you that. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because I T'Challa likes to, you know what I'm saying, keep in shape and throw a thousand strikes every day, that don't necessarily mean that I might get initiated into a whole nother house. Yeah, that could be Sean Go. That could be a lot of people. A lot of Orishas. I don't <laughs> think Ogun's the only one that fights, folks. <laughs> nah, that's... uh. Here, Here's a fact that people may not know. All the warmongering that's done well, most of the warmongering that's done in Yoruba culture in the in the stories about Orisha is not done by Ogun. It's done by Shango. Shango is the warmongering divinity. Ogun is the actual war. That's his that's his department. He doesn't have to go out and slaughter a thousand people. It's that is him. They say a a pade ogun ni bi ija, a pade ogun ni bi ita. Ogun is present with it when when there's fight and 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 anger and all this. He's he's around, basically. He'll be around. But what Tyreek Nishi is doing with it, I mean, ogun juice. I mean, come on, man, you that corny? That eh, shit, it's garbage. <laughs> It's terrible, man. It's terrible what we do to our own culture. Oh, boom, juice. I'm serious, I man. Some of that. I bet. I bet it tastes good, though. It ain't actual juice. <laughs> it, it's he talking about, you know, because he he made it like a clothing line almost. You know, he got mask that say Ogun oh, juice on. Well, this was funny about the mask. The mask has a vev on it, right? That's not even Yoruba culture. The, the Vev is from Haitian voodoo, but he found the Ogu Vev and put it with Ogun. So now it's Ogun juice. I guess that's the drip, you know, as the as the kids say. 
Oh, you need to be stopped. <laughs> it need to be stopped. So can we have a conversation about distinguishing the African-American interpretation versus what actually is in what like the, the, the deification of Timbuktu is just hilarious. Right. And from the African-American perspective, like the way we deify Timbuktu versus, you know what I'm saying? The energy of what Timbuktu represents for indigenous Africans. I think that needs to be had when we're talking about Africa in terms of what actually is and what like, or even Ogun or Oshun, Obatala, any one of the Orishas from Nigeria that we find in Yoruba culture. Any yeah. deal, you know um, what I'm saying? Man, it's, it's, this is why I say enough with the African facts. Get into the culture, because if you don't have the cultural, historical background, you're going to look at it the wrong way, you know, and, and that can be detrimental to your understanding. You know, uh, Timbuktu, you know, we know about Timbuktu because there were some scholars of yesteryear that, that were uncovering African history when white folks were telling us in America we had no history. So anything that looked African, sounded African, might be African, that was, you know, brought up and put in books as a way to um, as a way to, you know, legitimize our history. And it and and that was good enough for the time, but you know, information has to be updated can't it can't stay the same forever you know and and that's and we haven't done a great job of that on some subjects some subjects we kind of let flap uh flap in the wind unfortunately timbuktu is one of them you know uh you have to have that cultural historical narrative on anything coming from the continent or you're going to miss something and you have to be able to study enough cultures to where you kind of get the general consensus of Africa and you'll find yourself knowing things that you didn't even look into yet just because of the pattern that, you know, African civilizations take. Um, brother said the uh, foundational back black uh Americas would deport Ogun. That's funny as shit. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, um, that's another one, uh, Brother Sute, uh, that we ruled Spain. That's another area. We dropped the ball on that one big time. Uh, we didn't do the homework. We saw that we were there. And that was enough. And somehow, you know, the legend spread that we ruled Spain and taught these people this and taught these people that and people start misinterpreting art and all types of stuff happen. Uh, and, you know, it's just so it's, it's Europeans how to bang. <laughs> we couldn't teach nobody nothing in Spain. We didn't speak the local language. That's what I'm sorry. They, they called us the mutes. We didn't speak the language. We couldn't even communicate with nobody. We traveled in packs to not get attacked in Spain. We wasn't in power. I'm sorry. We wasn't in power. We were not the ruling authority. We was the army. And I would go a step further to say we was the slaves. It is what it is. But you got to do the homework. Like uh, a great book on that uh, is called uh, Black Morocco. That's a great book on that, man. That breaks down, you know, what was going on with the Moors in totality, you know, especially talking about black people. You know, that's a great uh, resource on that. But that's another one of those topics that, you know, the generation that came after John G. Jackson, John Henry Claude, Dr. Ben, Chancellor Williams, uh, you know, et cetera, they dropped the ball on that. I'm sorry. 
You know, I don't say it to offend nobody. They but made, They made us romanticize the Moors. Man, I mean. They did. That's yeah. Fair. I mean, you know, we, we didn't, the, the generation that came behind them didn't do the homework to, to, to clean, you know, some of this up. We had a great, you know, start. We had a great, you know, the, the, the gun went off. Bah, we got all running. And then, you know, after them runners were finished, they race. The team behind them mm, just wasn't as impressive. Mm. So, you know, we got to form our team in this day and age. And this is part of why we got the Mossy. This is part of why we got Kofi Pichet TV. This is why the Honor Ross squad was formed. MBK, you know, all of the little splinter groups out there, man. This is why, because we're trying to continue that, that scholastic legacy, you know, and stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. But that doesn't mean agree with everything, you know, somebody said, or we can't go further in the research than they may have went. You know, some of our ancestors instructed us, in fact, to do that. They said go further than me. They said don't believe everything I say. You know, but every time you do that, do what your ancestor told you to do. Now it's taken by some people with fragile egos as disrespect and, and stuff like that. And, you know, that's fine, but we got to grow up. We don't have time for childish games. You got to grow up. Black people don't have as much time as they think they have. We got to grow up and we got to advance this research so the next generation that comes after us will not have to do some, uh, you know, some of the reconstructions that we've had to do. We just got to advance that ball, you know, till we get to past the goal line. So we ain't the old man. Oh, you accused me of starting. <laughs> 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 oh no, you did not, <laughs> man! You see that hey. nose and them lips? You can't tell me black people weren't here. Hey, what was the name of that Musa song? Though I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> the Monster <Yeah>. Rhythm, <laughs> non-existent. What, what rhythm? <laughs> what rhythm is that? So yeah, yeah. The the point of all of this goes back to to a bigger issue within ourselves, uh, collectively, you know, our jokes aside. And it's the infusion or the inclusion of other people writing or uh, putting our history into a different light or perspective or, or even uh, dismissing our history in some instances and claiming what they wanted to claim as their own and then dismiss every other intricate part of our history, whether, you know, whether it be anywhere on the continent. Um, and, you know, one of one of the most pivotal moments in uh, for us, as far as when uh, that that great generation of elders began writing and challenging academia was, you know, the leakies was equivalent in that as well. And then why would I even bring them up? Because they were they were front and center with evolution, you know, the hominids, how many stages of the hominids could be found. Oh, we keep turning over a new hominid species that would gain other interests that would gain black interests that would help project us into a different light. This is why you have Dr. Ben. Writing in every single book that he's published something about hominids. At the beginning of every book, he's arguing that in every every name of book that he he hasn't read about hominids in. Maybe a small Nile Valley book. The the yellow one. That's the only one I can with the, with the pyramid on the front of it. All the rest of them got hominids. He got pictures of hominids in the book. 
and, and the mother and uh, mother of civilization. It's pictures in the back. Yeah. That's another thing that that you know we didn't do as a people, man. We didn't read none of our ancestors' work. A lot of us got intimidated and was just going to lectures and just hanging around them and was you know begging them up. You know we supported. Well, them. They didn't read the Black Man of the Nile. Man, they ain't read that book, man. They, they, the mother of Western civilization. They didn't read them them books. Did you skip? Did you skip chapters? Mm. Skip chapters because mm. anytime a man put pictures of hominids in the book, and then you come back and tell me that evolution, uh, that nobody, uh, no African scholar supports evolution, I'm like, I know you didn't read it. Mm -hmm. You probably got it on your, you know, your dresser. You didn't read it, man. A lot of that stuff intimidated people. Uh, I mean, the book that y'all going over, Destruction of Black Civilization. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't read that book at all. Yeah. Blueprint for Black Power. They didn't read that. A lot of people don't read that book at all. I ain't saying you got to read all of it, but at least read a lot, a, a good portion of it. You know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people got these books because they were the popular thing at the time. And then they sat on the shelf. And listened to lectures. And they listened to the people that came behind those people, but they never got into what our, our our warrior scholars got into. They never got into that. They didn't read it. You just wasted some money. And that's why we in the position that we in now. Not enough people studied our ancestors work. They just didn't, man. It became popular to go another direction. New age was on the horizon. And everybody flocked to that because I don't know if you noticed, but in new age, you don't have to do nothing, man. You don't have to read nothing. It's all about your intuition, how you feel. You know, you don't have to do no homework. You carry crystals in your pocket, burn sage in your house. None of this requires any rigor, any serious study. That's the starter pack, crystals and sage. And yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going back to sleep starter pack. Yeah, go ahead and pick you up one. Uh, <laughs> crystal, sage. What else can we put in there? Tarot, uh, yeah. chakras. That's the I'm going back to sleep starter pack. Can't forget about that comedic yoga, my brother. Oh, you know they was doing yoga and kidney. Comedic yoga. Oh, no. <laughs> the new one is the new one. Can't even let the people have yoga. The new one is the pyramid was built ten thousand years ago. The, the the great the great pyramid was built ten thousand years ago. Jesus. Oh wow. I ask. I did, no. This is how you get them, Sutet. Ask them which one is the great one. <laughs> they don't even know. They just say the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pyramids. That's the, 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 the the uh the the third one. <laughs> I say name the pyramid. What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> but the pyramid yeah. got names, right? <laughs> but this, go, this goes back to, to the importance of what's being done, like you said. Like, I'll think about how this conversation all transpires. It, it, it all transpired because the work, the, the baton was passed, but it fell out of somebody else's hand. During the I ain't gonna get into no names, but a lot of people they drop the baton, and you know what happened in a relay race when you yep. drop the baton, you disqualified, you can't win. <laughs> yep. And right now we're vying, and then it's like, nah, well, okay, y'all had an opportunity to correct a lot of this information because your era is in the age of the internet, whereas Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, John G. Jackson, Chancellor Williams didn't have the internet per se at their disposal to do some things that they needed to do or the ability to, to go and clear up some of the misconceptions and correct even their own work. They didn't have that to do that. You know what I mean? Because they were fighting in a different era. Scholastically was fighting in a totally different era. So why in your time in your era, you just only relied on what felt good to our people. We were so hell bent on trying to feel good about stuff that we forgot to listen. Uh, uh, order precedes chaos. 
If we know order precedes chaos, we should have stayed. We should have stayed in scholastic chaos until it proceeded with order. And once we get order, that would mean that we would evolve as a, as a uh, the generation after them evolve. And then what we would be doing today is standing on the people that can't do all the things that they need to do no more, like the James Smalls and all the other names that people want to name, which is they pseudo, the other names are pseudoed out. But to stand on their shoulders and then advance even more knowledge. This is why we have a lack of, of reading material from some of these people that some people call elders these days. And that's not a, 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 a smack in their face, but it would help us a lot to have written material from them to continue to advance it because it means that they actually, like you said, man, listen to Dr. Clark, listen to Dr. Ben, followed in their footsteps, actually sat at their feet and learned from their greatness because their greatness was not, okay, rely on the internet. Their demonstration was uh, wholeheartedly not that. And then now we have this pushback again going on where we're rehashing old arguments and then we have the coming of the Israelites again trying to say certain things because they're able to get away with it because of the internet because of this gap of intelligence that stopped. And now we're back to defending mode or we either piss, well, not y'all, but I'm either pissing people off that y'all, some people respect, and then it's a whole contentious problem with, I don't like Sean. You don't like me because I want to live in the uncomfortable truth world. Because the truth is uncomfortable. It never feels good. If you're a serious scholar, you're not going to be liked anyway. <laughs> you know how many people hated Dr. Ben? They don't talk about it either. Hated. Uh, uh, Dr. York called Dr. Ben and John Henry Clark demons. <laughs> so much he hated them. <laughs> called them some demons. <laughs> you're going to be hate because whether pe people talk about this all the time, you know, we got all these little corny sayings the truth will set you free. Uh, you know, all I care about is the truth. You know, no, we don't. We don't want to hear the truth because when the truth goes against our already made up mind, our natural confirmation and, and, and uh, cognitive bias, we react adversely. Because we really don't want the truth. We want to hear something we agree with we want to hear something that you know sound good to us that feel good scholarship and if you serious about scholarship it, it has no place here <laughs> feel good scholarship has no place so your bubble's going to get busted doing this everybody on this panel i guarantee once believed something or thought something was true and when we did the homework we was like well damn i got got as it just goes with the territories. I don't care nothing about people not liking me. But you can't say I ever scammed nobody. You can't say I ever uh, did something that was morally unjust. You can always say that I was a hunter with you. If that make you not like me, then the problem's with you. It's not me. You know, I, I have academic integrity and I have integrity in my life. And that's how I live my life as an African man. So. It's just going to happen as time evolves. Some things stand the test of time and some things don't. It's no slight to anybody. We all make mistakes, but we have to advance the knowledge for the next generation. See, that's our problem. We're only thinking about us. You ain't thinking about the generation after you that's going to have to clean up your mess. Mm hmm. And I'm not trying to have them clean up a whole bunch of stuff that we got wrong, man. If we can, if we can do anything to help it, if we can do anything to help it, man. Let's 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 get it right for you know our children, their children, and so you know, one day black folks can you know get it together. Right now, in the information, the vast majority of us are very behind. So. Only information that's right and exact is going to change that. Because our ancestors went up against the status quo. They went up against white supremacy, 
physically and academically. And it's going to happen again. You're going to have to constantly challenge the narratives that are put out, even though they've gotten much better in some areas. You're going to have to constantly challenge it. And like I always say, when going up against those big monsters, you got to have everything correct. You got to have your ducks in a row. You only get one chance with white supremacy. You only get one chance with Arab supremacy. You only get one chance with any of our enemies of the African. So you got to have it right. So when you come to me and and, and show me a bunch, uh, show me the same old make head for the last 20 years and I show you the ones that look totally Asian and you want to ignore those. No, I can't roll with your research. I'm sorry. We got to have accurate research to go all the way in. Ain't no half stepping. But some people want to half step and beat their chest. And I'm this, I'm that. No, nah, man. We all in this together. So, you know, that's just my two colon us. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's a uh, real good point. And um, the only way we, yeah, the only way we face our issues, man, is by correcting a lot of the misinformation and misconceptions and I think that we've all did our part, continue to do our part on trying to make sure that we have more accurate information. That's the only way that you actually, you know, uh, when we talk about scientists or being scholastic, you know, being scholarly is, is advancing work. Being being scientific is advancing knowledge. So, you know, you know, uh, scholastically and scientifically, in order to advance a civilization, you have to have the you have to have the correct method. You have to have the correct information in order to move your people forward. And um, I think that, you know, um, some people, some of us wait too late to acknowledge that. And, you know, uh, I guess we continue to do our job to pay the ground and, and to keep people interested in, in, in the things that directly affect us and to continue to build relationships with our African brothers and sisters on the, the continent and correct a lot of the uh, misconceptions that leave the continent and or that are that wasn't some of these misconceptions were not created on the continent by the way a lot of these misconceptions was created in in, in north america or what we call today the united states of america um and a lot of them either took place in new york or uh, Chicago, Illinois, to be more specific. That doesn't root out the other areas because, you know, there's some, you know, Cuba might have some misconceptions. South Florida might have some misconceptions, things of that nature. But specifically speaking, some of the things that have hindered the advancement of knowledge have come out of specifically those two areas, New York and uh, uh, Illinois, Chicago, to be more exact. And uh, and that deals with <laughs> that deals with a lot of the uh, Muslim interpretation of things, whether it be from an NOI standpoint or the Moorish creation of things, and then the New Yorkish embellishment of uh, ancient Kemet and or all the Rosicrucian infused uh, beliefs on the Remedge and or any other African tradition. Um, now nah, I'm not going to really, I can't really say Atlanta. Uh, they're not creating these things. They're inhabiting these things from other areas. You know, uh, that tends to be there. It's different when think about the the knowledge level, the knowledge hub. Remember, everybody used to think that Harlem was the main vocal point of scholarship. That was the hub of information in periods of time. Once upon a time, some would argue, if not Harlem, it was Chicago in some instances because the NOI was spearheaded there or back in. Oh, boy's day. That was the case. Um, Atlanta 
And Ben can speak more to it, but I don't see it as more tainted as a New York, Harlem specifically, uh, Illinois, Chicago specifically. We don't, we, don't have a, uh, we don't have a voice of Atlanta that's just saying crazy shit. Yeah. You know, we, we, we don't we don't have that here like other places do. You know, we got Molly Boo Rudy, we got Brother Unc, we got myself. Uh, you know, we got Mama Marimba Ani here. You know, we got Chief Fama here. We got uh, Wande Abimbola here. You know, we got uh, Araba Adedayo Logundudu. Uh, we have a lot of people here that people, you know, respect. We got former Black Panthers, uh, Baba uh, Abel Dura Wahad. We got Brother Kalanji. You know, we, we got a lot of strong voices here um, that that won't let somebody that just come around and just, just try to tear apart the community saying crazy shit. I'm not saying that there ain't no pseudo shit here. I'm yeah. Not- in that by no stretch of the imagination but the information is not coming from a a you know a central point here in atlanta it's being copied from something that comes from youtube I had my chat open. you said what oh i'm talking to somebody talking oh. to yeah um we we don't we don't have that man we don't you know have the 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 outrageous claims coming out of Atlanta, like it comes out of New York, you know. Um, and I can only speak on today because because somebody mentioned uh, Bobby Hemet, you know, but uh, brother Bobby is is yesteryear. Uh, but yes, he was. Uh, I think he still lives here. Um, haven't heard from him in a minute. I know he was sick at one point, but haven't heard from him in a minute. But um, yeah, we we got a we don't we don't, we got a strong community, and uh, we don't have the the craziness that's going around up in Harlem. We just don't have it. Um, I would like to see more, uh, you know, outings like it used to be in Atlanta. You don't really see them like that no more, but. Um, yeah, we, we, we don't have that problem, thank goodness. But it is being copied here in certain um in certain um you know, sex. You know, they just see what they see on YouTube and, you know, try to live their life that way. But thankfully we don't we don't have a, a, a pseudo patrol here, you know. Thank goodness. Yeah, man. And I think that um, I think that that's a good thing in a sense because it allows people to to actually discern a little bit better. But I think the more you know, like the more uh, that you're able to uh, shed light on, uh, you know, Yoruba culture, since uh, a lot of people in the South are trying to reacclimate themselves into to the traditions um you know from a, from any shay shay perspective is vital i know a lot of them tend to go the other route regular de ocha but you know um a win is a win as you say a win is a win um but just trying to get them uh to shay shay is convenient and um i think you doing a good job of that um, you know what I mean? By having that content available for our brothers and sisters that we can share that with to help them be able to build and uh, learn more regarding um, the traditions. And uh, so that's that's helpful. I think scholastic from a scientific perspective, um, a, a lot of people don't like Brother Unk, but what he what he began to argue with that was different from everybody else that he's encountered among that Harlem crew and other areas and other places was you know science standing on science and uh, 
Yeah, accurately communicate. You got to give credit to Brother Unk, though, because he cleaned up a lot of the mess in Atlanta. Ooh, yeah, uh, okay. I yeah. got to put that out there. Uh, Unk used to ride around, be everywhere. <laughs> 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 I done been in some places with him, just gunslinging, you know, stomping, stomping the, the, the crazy information out. So I got to give him a lot of credit. For that, and he don't even live in the city of Atlanta. It do live way out there. So you know, I gotta give him credit for that, man. Just that was that was Unk's uh that was Unk's role for for you know a long time in the city, and a lot of people know Unk for that. But you know, a lot of people don't like him. Whatever. I want to see this scholar that everybody likes. Right. Like, like nobody, man, like everybody got an issue with you. Everybody going to have an issue with you, you know. Uh, <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> what, what you laughing at? Sure, but look, at look at the chat. <laughs> oh, my. Um, <laughs> oh, man, y'all really look. I got no personal problem with Bobby Hemmett. And and to be honest, he did say some things that that was correct, honestly. Uh when I look at some of his old stuff, he and and he had some sources. I give him that. I can't just, you know, his intent to me is not the same as some of uh, what we see today. Because some people today just doing what they want to do just to make money. You know, it is what it is. Um, but his intent was always good. Um, but he made some, some mistakes, a, a lot of mistakes, you know, unfortunately. But his intent, I believe, was right where it needed to be. Uh, you know, he he just um, just some of the subject. I think he tried to cover too many subjects, man. You know, that's that's one of the, the great things about the Masi, you know, the the, the, the Kofi Piche TV, the, the Amara squad, you know, MBK, et cetera. We ain't got to know everything. When you a one man band, you got to play all the instruments. And that's tough, man. That's tough when you if you're trying to cover everything in black phenomena. That's tough. You know, you gotta try to cover the science, the history, the culture, the art, the math, the, the medical. The, damn, dude, you just one guy. You're spreading yourself so thin that you know. Pure black say keep it above Bobby Pseudo. <laughs> I'm not calling, I'm not gonna do it, man. That, that brother in poor health. I'm going to leave it alone. Y'all not going to get me on record <laughs> calling that dude soon. Bobby was a storyteller, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Like Bobby I said, his, his intent was good. Some of the execution. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All questionable. Hey, when you, when you shoot that jump shot, everybody's intent is to make that shot. <laughs> Whether it's an air ball, over the goal. <laughs> Your intent was to make that shot, you know. And, 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 hey, some of some of some of his shots, they ain't go in. I just I just put it like that. But pure black. I don't appreciate you trying to make me call this dude soon. <laughs> I'm not doing it, man. Oh, y'all just gonna put everybody in the chat, huh? Y'all just <laughs> they just put everybody in there. I'm not some of these dudes. I'm not even gonna talk about, man. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And you see everybody quiet because I know y'all see the same names I see in this chat. It ain't none of y'all. What you talking about? I don't see none. <laughs> <laughs> Man, y'all see the same I ain't saying nothing. Y'all gonna leave me on the mic? Man, look, no. <laughs> everybody got quiet. Hey, I, <laughs> hey, I will. I will say this though. Um, you know, I can appreciate, um, scouring the internet, 
and coming across the Amara squads, the Seshus, the Masis, because again, right in my lane that I'm sitting in, here comes some brothers who actually are knowledgeable. Uh, some of these brothers like Brother Black Panther um, for his work, how he feeds his family um, is around the world, period. Not just travel for what he wants to do. He's traveling because that's what his job says to do. And, 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 you know, so that is going to bring experience and understanding to the whole situation too. being a well-rounded traveling man in true African fashion. Um, and then you have, again, Black, Black Panther going to Africa, various parts of Africa, um, and showing you, well, this is what I see. And this, this, this is what I see here in Kimmy. This is what I see here in West Africa, my homelands, where I'm from. This is where, I, you know, that's important. To be able to, for one, scour the internet and find a hundred million pseudos, and then to actually find some people who will tell you, look, this is what I like about Africa in their presentations, in their writings, and this is what I don't like about Africa. That is something I feel that sets the Masi apart. I'm a raw squad. They don't, they don't, they don't gotta like brother. Ong. They don't like none of us. Kofi Pasa, you know, uh, we you don't have to like none of us. But we will tell you that this is what it is, whether you like it or not, whether we like it or not, we present on that type of information. I think that's important to highlight with our scholarship because we definitely don't romanticize by any means. Um, even, even Dr. Ben and Dr. You know, the ones that we love, the scholars we love, shake hands the joke. We know the mistakes that they made. Asar always talk about the, his points of contention with uh, Theophile Benga. You know what I'm saying? He don't just big up Theophile Binger like everything Theophile put down is is he agree with. You know, there's some lingu linguistic discrepancies there, um, as it should be. Scholars going to argue, man. Scholars going to argue, even if it's just themselves, you know, scholars debate themselves. I mean, I mean, this is how we have academic journals, man, because scholars went to went to war against each other and there was a winner and there was a loser you know and that's just how it is you know if, if y'all think we hard on uh on the pseudos and the, and the and the charlatans of the community y'all should see how we talk to each other it ain't, <laughs> it ain't no sweet day either <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just uh you know how we talk to each other is uh we 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 get it in scholastically against each other. So you know, iron sharpens iron, and that's just how we move, man. Yeah, they didn't. Oh lord, they didn't brought up Phil Valentine, boy. Why y'all doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Lead tea cures Corona. Oh man, that, yeah, yeah. Because I that I put that in the video. Bunk, yeah. Yeah, man. He said, "Put paint your paint your children's rooms with lead paint." Yeah, I remember that, but not lead tea, man. Rock mm -hmm. I ain't gotta be lying. <sighs> <laughs> Boy, as I said, the generation that came. <laughs> after some of our warrior scholars, boy, y'all got some. Y'all got some characters, man. I got some characters, bro. I just whoo. Is it Did teach your corona? Hmm. <laughs> you gotta play that monster uh rhythm while you playing it on your walls, though. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work, you know. Mm. <laughs> Sing that monster song with that paintbrush, and you good, brother. How that song go? <laughs> Man, I don't need no vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to play the the Mansa rhythm live. <laughs> Look, when I find that joint, I'm a, I'm gonna let you know. When the right jelly give me the story of the monster, and then that's another thing, brothers. Where is the story? No, I'm, sorry. Story. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done. Oh, All of the rhythms that I hear on chorus. Nah, I don't nah, know. I ain't playing, dog. 
Oh man, that's like going to Oyo and they ain't got no story about Shango, yo. Man. <laughs> oh man, that's uh that's unfortunate. Yeah, I agree with you, Pure Black. Our our, our generation got just as many uh characters running around. That's that's why we do what we do. You know, people, uh, everybody in this chat, man, they care about black folks, man. Globally, if we didn't care. We wouldn't do this because ain't no money in this. You don't get rich being no no lecturer, no author, no. You don't get on the bestsellers list doing what we do. We care. From the phone? Huh? I'm sorry, I'm sorry yo. Zane said, he said uh, he talked to Phil. Phil diagnosed him with, uh, what is that, sciatica? What the hell are you looking at? Hold on. Sciatica. Sciatica, sorry. He said oh, something about his sciatic nerve. Over the phone? No, no MRI? Bruh, no functional movement screen? Nothing? No, no type of, no nothing. Pain in the neck, hip, and outer side of the leg caused by compression of the spinal nerve root in the lower back, often owing to degeneration of an intervertebra. Uh, disc yeah man when you you got sciatica problems your back is about to be through you got some issues you finna start walking funny you finna start like that's a that's a major nerve man that <laughs> requires surgery most times mm -hmm. so did you get the surgery zane did you get the? he said in 2011 oh i well did he get the surgery <laughs> Did, was, was his diagnosis correct? <laughs> I gotta ask. <laughs> you go to the doctor and they was like, "Yeah, that's that's what it is." He said, "No, I'm good." Said, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said, I'm healthy. <laughs> Y'all is wild in this chat. No, look, look. First of all, we not gonna talk about the late. Mr. Blair, man, you, you passed on to the realm of the ancestors, man. You know, safe journey home, man. I'm not going to say nothing about Mr. Blair. Nope, not doing it. Can't do it. He said, I used to listen to them fools, YP and SETI all the time. Mm. We salute your growth, sister. Sister Lakeisha, we salute your growth. Sea moss. Oh my God. Oh. Some Man. of this, I don't know how they be getting black folks with some of this stuff. Out of sea moss? Mm -hmm. 102 minerals. <laughs> Zion was supposed to be on that alkaline diet. <laughs> the, first of all, for everybody that's going to get mad at me, whatever. Just look up how many min minerals <laughs> your body needs. <laughs> I got news for you. It ain't nowhere near 102 or 92 or anything else that they tell you CMOS is great for. You're going to be disappointed. I mean, our ancestors have been dealing with every kind of plant in West Africa. Mm -hmm. And still have certain problems right now today. Hmm. <laughs> Judy, crazy. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna spill the bean. There are five major minerals in the human body. <laughs> five. We talk about calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, and magnesium. All the other uh, ele uh, elements are called trace elements. So that's that's you know somebody come up to you trying to get you to get the sea moss because it's got all of the minerals on earth in it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. 
Really? really think you gonna throw the moringa in there? <laughs> well, y'all mm. shit tonight. Well, I swear. <laughs> Ain't nobody mm. getting money no more. <laughs> Not the look, moringa. Moringa is a good. Uh, it's a good uh, supplement to take. I just it's wouldn't cute. buy it from the guy that's selling it in our community. Let's <laughs> just go like that. <laughs> Humans metabolize food differently than other animals. Let me say that again. Humans mm. metabolize food differently than other animals. Mm -hmm. So when you come to me for personal training and you argue about why I still eat meat and you don't, mm. um, don't come to me with the argument of, you know, cows and gorillas uh <laughs> I forgot about that one. You're the strongest animal. You, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> well, I ain't a rhino either. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you one thing: an ape is not strong because he eat grass. <laughs> I mean, ape come out the womb strong. I hate to break it to you. Y'all just need some robotussin. <laughs> oh, you old <laughs> get some of that tussin. Man, mm. I've been on the field. Valentine died, water and sunlight. Oh. God, I thought that was gonna be the last time I heard that when I was in Harlem. Man, mm. that's what that's how I found y'all. Because I that oh, I'm gonna tell you something. That night, that night goes down in infamy, man. Like everybody was out there, man. I mean, uh, you know. From Unc to me to Rob Bourne, you know, it was so many people out there that night, bro. That video, I still see that video circled around, man. I still see. Matter of fact, one of my Masonic brothers caught on to that video just this year and he hit me up. He said, hey, man, I seen you in this video. I was like, oh, hell, what video are you talking about? And he showed it to me. It was that night. It was that night. So, I mean, uh, that video, um, a lot of people, a lot of people found us through that video, man. That that video got hella views. I think it got over a million just on Facebook. And then, you know, whatever it did on YouTube, whatever it did, like, if we could have monetized that video, we could have got some change off that. Yeah. Yep. That was a that was a payday video right there. Uh peace uh Kyle. Yeah. Peace yeah. brother. Kyle, I'm assuming that y'all finally got through the Gideon that his presentation was inaccurately put together, especially after you he tried to use the slave voyages with the name Yah in it. What did you just say? I'm sorry. <laughs> No, just oh, not nothing. My goodness. I just inside thing with Kyle. Playing that <laughs> Musa. Nah, man. I just really think that uh we're easily influenced by misinformation because we don't use proper met research methodology, and that's something that yeah, bingo. That's something that everybody is gonna start saying, like, look. You know, like, like you told me, like, shh. everybody know I don't like the air. I hate them jokers. I don't like nothing about Islam. I don't <laughs> care nothing for Islam. I don't care nothing about no Allah or none of that. But in order for me to even like, get a little bit deeper into some of these other places, man, I have to mess with these bastards. On a level, and I'm telling you right now, based on a lot of the the newer research that I'm doing, expanding the research and just dealing with you know air, just only Arab stuff. Oh, man, them joking. Nobody else, man. They they romanticize too, but. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be done, and I think that we're not reading both sides of the argument to formulate. We just want to make a claim, and then we want to not. We don't necessarily want to make a claim. We want to say it's a fact, 
or we want to switch the burden of proof so that the one that's really saying that these people are here, they are everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Is uh Allah Wakba? He said Allah Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, man. But um, oh man, he said you spill get really so gain no grip. Gain no, yeah, gain no, bro. Y'all go it. That's, that's Jehudi. That's Jehudi fault. You know what I'm saying? I'll go it in tonight. But yeah, that, that's. Ooh. You know, really, a lot of the pseudo uh, pseudos begin with the, you know, well, I, I can't really say that. Hey, you notice we naming all these people from New York? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back to my point I made earlier. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just throw since y'all naming names. The other person that was out there, young pseudo, <laughs> he from well, New York. Buffalo, hey, from New York. Get on, hey, yo, ain't nothing better than what Jehudi made the video where your boy said he died and he came back. <laughs> we gonna blame, gonna blame Jehudi for that. Yeah, we got the yep. He pulled, he pulled a Gano out too. This is why we got so many publications, man. That's why we fight so hard, man. Because another thing you can deduce from from the names that have been mentioned. Ain't no works. Mm -mm. Ain't no works, man. A lot of talking. A lot of talking, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a lot. Um, what's pathetic? I think it's one person, one pseudo I know that wrote a book. Well, two pseudos I know that wrote a book. It's a couple. But it'd be one book, and that's it. Yeah, be, yeah. Um, what was what was uh young pseudo buddy name, man? OC. Yeah, I was OC Kafour. Now he was here in Atlanta. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He in Atlanta, he got drove up out of here. Yeah, he, he's been absolutely quiet too. Well, I haven't seen anything anybody sharing his stuff from social media or anything mm -hmm. like that. We, they got him up out of here, man. He he messed over too many people. With that homeschooling thing, that homeschooling thing that he was doing. Oh, okay. So that's why he knew. Yeah, people got up, got him up out of there, man. He on uh, what's that? What's that website? Uh, <sighs> you know, fraud. 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 That a bureau? Nah, man. It's like it's like a, it's below that. It's like a fraud watch or something like that, man. But he on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what the other dude, the other dude who made some claims about a certain word, uh, once and Jetty uh actually tried to the dude, the, the comedic yoga dude, the dude who said uh uh that yeah, yeah what's the name? Something y'all something some hotel. Yeah, some like some crazy like that, but uh yeah, he bald headed. Yeah, um, man, he just you know he just do about comedic yoga. Yeah, he does comedic yoga thing, but yeah. that's it. I, I I can't believe I can't think of this dude name because I argue with him one time. Ra Yizer, Ra Tep. I I can't keep up with all these comedic names. Yeah, well, yeah, I think he's from up that area too. He still he's still around. He wrote a book. Yeah, he did. I wouldn't recommend it. But it's written. Yeah. Again, that, that distinction of what I can do in modern day with physical fitness that I might be able to take that pose and physically benefit myself today <laughs> in 2020. That why would I disrespect some ancestors umpteen thousand years ago and conflate them with some Hindu? I know, I know you. I know you do that uh, hot pose in your room, man. Oh, bro, come on, man. What? How you think? How you think the pectoralis major stay so? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get your bicep, you know, involved in that pose, bro. <laughs> hey, but I wanted to say, man, when you when you said, you know, you get people that uh, um, you know, uh, are not vegan. Or that are vegan that come to you, I would say, uh, tell them you African man, 
Africans. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate I hate to bring it to you. <laughs> man, I say um, you know, I haven't found Nope. And and I, I haven't. And I and I don't I don't have to be and I do I do go all over Africa too. I don't stay in West Africa. Like I really get down because of my linguistic interests. You know, mm -hmm. I have to and and because I do want to become more proficient with the sesh. And I do want to be able to understand and look at the sesh like how me and you could like if I was to text or put something in the chat and I could write something in the chat three different ways that all of the brothers on the panel and everybody in the chat will understand me. I want to be able to look at the glyphs the same way. And mm -hmm. it is because of my thirst for that knowledge, right? Um, similar to how the South Africans, our Southern Africans, seek out the baboon for certain things for knowledge and the ibis bird for knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it is that knowledge that allows me to understand enough about Africans to know that you can't make certain claims around me without me checking you. Because I know too much about my people to know certain things just couldn't possibly be true, like doing further research, not just because it's done on the Seshumani Meta Netra channel, but looking at those particular poses or what have you that you see my art in. And really looking at it and saying, hmm, can I find glyphs that say the word yoga? Cause I ain't found that neither. <laughs> <laughs> like that don't even make sense, bro. Oh man, nah, it it don't. Now nah, we can talk about shrines. Everything is everything. I, you knew how many was in my house. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely comfortable talking about that. It's all good for me, man. And why cool. you look like you on a, a, a police stakeout? Yeah, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Officer Kofi. Yeah. Man, I just got out of work. Just got out of work. Don't try to black power woods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put your work clothes back on, man. Don't try to hurry up getting the car and change his outfit. <laughs> now you bring it up. Hey, I'm going to pop out and pop back in, man. They ain't got nothing to do with you popping out in the end. Show signal. <laughs> yeah, that cricket. Man, he don't want to move to the city, man. He wants to stay an hour outside the city. Ain't no towers out there. Ain't now, now another. This is my thing. He said he refused to update his scholarship. Yeah. He's gathering artists. He's got white folks listening to him and said he should be pissed yeah. off. Yeah, uh, said he refuses to update his scholarship. But notice though, lately, uh, both him and Young Sudo have uh, returned back to Kimmy. Remember, the metal nature had not been deciphered. Yeah, both well, that's of where the money was at. Yeah, both of these living you when you live in your mama's basement, you need okay. I'm yeah, but they going back to teach, you know, talking about it and stuff, you know, mentioning and things of that nature. YP just went ahead and went with Trump and he saw that it got him some more views and some donations. So he rolled that wave all the way to the Trump people just start flooding them in with money. Now the presidential election over, he gonna come back around and switch up. He man. might switch up when this thing finally over in January. Hey man, chameleons that are losers in life gotta do what they gotta do, stay above just what it is, man. That's mm -hmm. all that brother take consciousness and 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 the, the, the information of our people to do. They're just trying to make them work. They not they ain't got no integrity, man. Why do you talk so much with my white folks on this channel and went around and said we need to unite to them and taking pictures and all that. I mean same same blueprint as as, as polite, you know. We've seen this before. That's why that's that's why we put out so many publications, man, and, and, and you know that's why we fight so hard, man, to try to get people to, some information that can you know transform their life. It's heartbreaking to see somebody so excited about something, and you know you talk to them a couple of years later, man, maybe, and they just so defeated because 
you know, they got got, they got took for some money. We don't want that to happen to our people, man. So we try to warn them, you know, and give them the tools to evaluate information, you know. Oh, you, you got to ask yourself when somebody bring you some information, you got to start asking some questions, man. What was your method upon to, to obtain this information? You, did you use the scientific method? Did you use inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning? You know, what method was it that you used to come across and, and validate this information? Because brothers and sisters, they tell you, well, I just use my intuition. Well, that ain't good enough for me. I need to know how you uh <laughs> i need to know the i need to know the step-by-step -step method and how you and we can walk through it together and you know come to a conclusion at the end but you know and intuition get your hand broke playing djembe i'm trying to tell you and sabar too really sabar you whack your hand you whack your fingertips with that stick i bet you won't pick up another sabar drum Sister Lakeisha, can you produce any of these 99 books that Polite said they have read? Can you produce one of them? <laughs> I mean, that he wrote, he said he wrote nine, because I've heard that claim out of his mouth. He, so he I, don't, know you made that, I know you didn't make that up, but can you produce any, just one? He he got some books. He he got some books he don't have. He got them, I don't, he I, got them Coke. Yeah, I, I didn't see no hundred books, but if you go to his, uh, I don't How know if this was. I don't. I have two. I have two books I bought back in two thousand and thirteen. Oh, you know, you shame. <laughs> bro, this was two thousand and thirteen, man. I, I had. I just. I had just commented. I had. I had. I had too long. Y'all oh, okay. remember that last show we did with Kofi talking about books? This bro. Take no book recommendations from well, no. but, and, and again, if you go back and you if you hear me reference from 2000 and 2013, I bought a bunch of books while I missed and hit. I, I ain't have nobody, mm. I didn't have no inner circle telling me, uh, <laughs> Kofi, don't get this book. Kofi, I will buy up every damn thing whenever I can Kofi, get my hands on modern day Gree off, agree out, out your uh, your I, name. <laughs> <laughs> Once a pseudo, always a pseudo. Yeah, you can't crucify me now. Everybody, everybody, look at this fool. Look at this fool. Everybody had, everybody had pseudo beginnings, man. Everybody had pseudo I like beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can account for two. So where the other 97 books at? I don't know. Anybody he, on the panel got any other books? Yeah. Cause he had, he had, I, I, I seen maybe, I seen maybe, uh, and this was, like I said, this was like in 2013, he had a store called, uh, I think it was called, uh, 2020. Yeah, 2012 that. stores, right. Yep. And, and he had like a lot of different products, like health, bladder rack, all that stuff. But he had some books on it. I, I, from what I seen. The, uh, what was it that he had on there? The, uh, status correction. Yeah. Status correction. He had that on there too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I seen deep in the web cycles. Yeah, I, I've been on there a couple of times. And even when you know, I used to watch, <laughs> I used to watch uh, Sarnetta. You had to go through yeah. there on a couple of couple yep. of live screens. You had to go oh, through yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Through the website. Yep, yep. So you know, that's how I'm kind of familiar oh, with it. And I ain't never been on that website. I refuse to get dude. My <laughs> hey, man, I, had to go on there. I was scared. I was like, nah, this dude ain't got nothing. Man, I had to go on there to watch Kim it on trial, man. They he yep. streamed it through 2012, though. So. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Sure did. Sure did. I, and it was so crazy with that one. Man, I had to I had to keep inboxing this dude to get Me um too. to just to get it. Cause I done paid my money. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I need to, and it had already started. You know what I'm saying? I had to keep inboxing and inboxing. I'm going back and forth with this dude, wife, giving yep. up my email address. Yep. My prospect was there, so I'm texting him saying, "Man, you better not let this dude take my money, man." <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Yep. But even even with them two books, I got. I'm not. You know. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. Even with them two books. And I had to like keep emailing. I had to call, you know, text his one of, one of his wives and shit. You know, yep. It took a while for me to get them, but I, I got them. You I'm know, I stayed got them. Yep, I got them. Mm. I eventually got them, man. But you had to go. You had to go through so. I had to go through so much to get them. 
And after that, I just, you know, I I, I, I said I wasn't going to purchase nothing else off of the, uh, um, <laughs> off of the website no more. Shit. Because I think uh, it took me almost two months to get my books, man. I like that. Damn, it didn't take you two months to get my money, but. And this is not, this is way pre pandemic, correct, Kobe? This ain't no 2020. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're dealing with with our books with that, right? You know. Yeah, this, this 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he'll lie, man. If I said, I want to come on the panel and show us all 63 of these books. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I believe, Vasa, he wrote 63. Come on, come on, I want to see all 63, too. Turn hey. the camera on. I think Vasa have done that. I want to see him. Man, <laughs> man, man I have 500 see. pages for volume two. Come on in here. Vasa had, had a thousand, a thousand pages for two volumes. <laughs> <laughs> he got more books than Dr. York. Y'all better stop playing with that boy. Sure. Uh, man. Okay, okay, so let me ask you this. When he did that debate with the with the uh Jew and he had all his books on the little rack, how come wasn't none of them his? Mm. Ooh. Hmm? That's Where his book was up there. He had a saw book up there. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, I see. And I think he to the lecture and you and you read the suit bitch, he, he used a saw book to beat yep. that Jew up. Yep. I know he used that. He used the elephant uh, uh elephant papyrus. Uh, it was a few other books he used. He showed to have none of his books up there. You right? You right? I looked none at that of his one. Books on the rack. Not a one. Yep. Not that one was- out of the 99, 97, 102, 500, <laughs> whatever number you come up with. Yep. <laughs> well, none of them his. If I do a debate with anybody, my publication will be up there. You damn right. Damn right. He don't even sell his books. <laughs> or at, at the vending, I didn't look this man in his face, and he wasn't selling his book. He was selling his DVDs, man. It wasn't no book on the table. Cause I bought one of his DVDs. That's how I know. Yeah, you done met him a couple of times, ain't you? Uh, ben? unfortunately, huh? Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. I got oh, shot by wow. book too, Vasa, and I. Oh, oh. I was talking about that book. Oh man, they got Vasa. They got Vasa and Co. Hey, I got shot the book, man. I got, got shot the book. I gave it to Unc. Oh, they mm. got you. Yeah, I gave it to Unc. I let Unc have it for free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I think I let somebody have bad too. Man, that book, that book. Hey, you you know when I watched it coming on trial and I, and I heard that Hebrew brother Kabbalah tearing up his book, I thought it was just hate, man. Mm. Swing and a miss, brother. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Mm. What y'all have been building on? Smash our arrows at it, dude. You shot the magic arrows at. Are you talking about that? Uh, 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 what's the name? Book. What did it? What did yeah, name? Shaka. Shaka. Yeah, I, I got it. I bought it. I got I it. Every book in his album. Yeah, it's still it's still on my it's still on my bookshelf, man. I bought it. Who got his album? Who got his, who got his rap out? I ain't in, got no rap out. out. I got that. I got the single. Egypt was a black land. I said Egypt was a black land. I know you got it, Vasa. Man, with them capital P's. Man. That's one of the worst music I've ever heard in my life. Man. I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all didn't like your scholarship? Fly like Winners. Huh? No, hell no. Uh, <laughs> shot the <hook. laughs> no, no. I, 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 man. It's just that book, man. That. Mm. Yeah. No, no page I, number. Like, no page so, number. Scholarship, man. No page numbers. No references. 
You talking about you still was terrible? He used. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of like some of his scholarship, man. He was the he was the one. Honestly, he was the one that put me on. No, he was the only. He was the one that made me back in. Uh, you know, back in those days, watch Sarnetta all the time was him because I wanted to see the sources. That's when I had, like, you know, I was already buying, like, just buying all kind of stuff. But then when I started seeing his, his stuff, I started seeing a lot of uh, books, you know, the sources he was using, I was using for, you know, wasn't it? So he do have somewhat of a, a, a research methodology. You know, I don't agree with everything. You know um that i've seen him present but he does have a a thing of uh you know he do understand research methodology i can't yeah. speak for a lot of them other fuck jokers on them up, hey he used to beat up on them hebrews though Wait. yeah 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 you can smash them now oh uh, he well, and he used to go right to him too yeah right yep. down the block mm -hmm. i just wish uh he put more of that fire in that book man look first of all that book is a little is is, a, is light, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that book light, bro. What the pamphlet? <laughs> I didn't want to call it pamphlet. Oh, I just say it's a little light, man. It's, it's, you have you have to excuse me, brother. My spears don't have no uh, what's the name? You know, I, <laughs> I ain't brought out the spears tonight, man. Like I'm keeping them stuck tonight. And I will. Yes, it's hard, I, and I can't say how many pages it was because there's no page numbers in the book. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to go over and try to find it when I get to the house, man. I sure still got it on my bookshelf. I don't know where it said it's thin. It probably okay. got lost in between the book, but I will. <laughs> count the pages when you get it. You're going to have to. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Pure Black, we got the bad you, man. He just brought up Iman Bashir, man. He, Ryan. I argued with uh, Iman one time. I ain't said nothing to him since, bro. I ain't even seen him since that time. Yeah, let that man go. That, the funniest thing with Iman was he kept saying there's no such thing as transition fossils. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In front of everybody. And the star got on right after him and said, uh, for the brother that said there was no transition fossils, there's actually a website, <laughs> transitionfossils.com, and you can go in there and look at all of them. God damn. Uh, uh. Isn't it crazy when the source is that easy where it's like something that you wouldn't think of where you could just take you two minutes? Man, <laughs> we ain't talking about no uh, temple at such and such and no, you know. No old Egyptian dynasty. No, no we're old talking about something required. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, did you even look? Um, mm -hmm. Hey, I do got a question though. Anybody can answer this. Do we know if uh if I don't know if it's still his name, uh brother Ali Muhammad. Is he still Ali Muhammad or he's something else? Who knows? He trains his name every week. Yeah, he, he had another name. I he think he still went by that, but he went by. I ain't seen him in a long time, but I know I used to see uh, his Facebook page and have uh, uh, that on there. Uh, he had another Facebook page. He had something else on there. But I, I can't even remember because that's been so long ago, too. You blocked me, man. man Y'all ran him out. Y'all ran him out. He showed that fake and grief, and then he got beat up by Jabari on, on Sasha. And he, uh, in a sense, he was trying to be an elbow. No, nah, ever, ever. Actually, Ali is one of the probably one of the original originators of the elbow movement. Honestly, he is he is Ali Baba Muhammad now. Oh, come on. all right. Like I said, <laughs> so what happened with Ali? He was bo boasting and bragging on them degrees and spelled his name wrong. And the whole community was getting after him, so he blocked all of us. I mean, all of them. See, Corey, no, he had already put it up there. He had a degree in, a degree in science. In science. He, he spelled science wrong. That science. <laughs> <laughs> and it's his own fault because he printed the degrees. I mean, is that my fault? 
<laughs> he got mad with me, you know. I blame the for that. This is this the Heesey start. The Heesey is the one that found it. I didn't even know that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Heesey saw that and was like, "Hey, hold up." <laughs> Always the silent assassin, bro. Hey, man, when you Ali Muhammad is the only person I know that sources himself in his books. Shit. And I mean, not like works that he did before. I mean, like the current work that you're reading. <laughs> him. <laughs> he sourced the book that he wrote, just wrote that you're reading. <laughs> the source is what you're reading. His source is on chapter three on the next chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Uh, man. He's just, it's, uh, I mean, man, it, it's crazy, though, man. I don't mean, you know, and these, these, these cats, like, I'm going to tell you, man, I thought these, these guys was. I'm just gonna be real with you, man. When I first, you know, got a word, man, these guys was my heroes, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. Polite, you know, uh Ali Muhammad, uh what's what's the other cat went to prison? Uh 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 the son of Sekhmet, what is damn Jahudi something, whatever uh, it's like. Uh, Tahuti. Tahuti. Natural Tahuti. Yeah, yeah, natural tahu, natural tahuti. I mean, all these guys, because, you know, I was, I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in, I'm green. So I'm trying to learn. And, and at this time, you know, the only platform I knew of at this time, or, you know, anybody that was intellectual was, was so-called intellectual was on, 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 on Sarnetta. So, you know, I, I listen to these guys like every single day, man, I, I, every day. And I'm like, man, I hope one day I can be like these guys. And, and it's crazy. As soon as I began to, you know, understand research and research methodology, and I, I, I started to read more over the years, man, I'm started, you know, look at them all crazy. Wait a minute, did he say that? No, he did not just say that. No, he did yeah. not just, say that. you know. And I'm you like, know, man, with you though, I was right there with you, same way, man. And they say, don't meet your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they gonna let you die. I said, Damn, I'm gonna say, I... man, the only dude ain't let me down was Unc, man. Yeah. He ain't let me down. I saw him at that vegan restaurant. He was cool as a fan. He ain't let me down, man. All them other cats. Damn. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah. Unc the same way, man. In real life, as he is on YouTube. He, ain't, you know what I mean? All, all them other cats, boy, they let me down, boy. He gonna give you the so and, and he riding with the sources, yo. He ran with the sources. So he, he talking about something, man. He going to pull out five, six, ten books. Yeah, all the mother cats, man. They they let me down big time, bro. Big time. I, I couldn't believe some of, the, some of the stuff. You know, it's one thing, you know, you see these guys on YouTube. But, boy, when you get around, a lot of people don't uh, didn't realize, man, from probably about – I want to say August, August 2015 to March 2016. I went around and just toured, man. I was with Unk. I was with Sarnetta. I was with, I was at every event, everywhere that was close. I was going, I was flying places. You know, that's back when I lived in uh, North Carolina. I was going, man. Me and my wife was hitting the road. Like, we was at all the stuff, bro. So, yeah. a lot of dudes I done met and chilled with and kicked it with and shared hotels with and, you know, all types of stuff, man. So, boy, it's worse than y'all think. Let me just put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than y'all think, man. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, you know. It's worse than y'all think. I say that Zane though. Griff will always been cool with me too, though, man. You know, I don't agree with all his his info like that, but he always been cool with me. He always been a friend to me. Uh, you know, he still we actually live in the same city. Um, I see him periodically at the at the Walmart, you know, but uh 
he always been cool with me, man. No issues with the brother, you know. He know I don't agree with all his info, but you know, it be like that sometimes. Yeah, I forgot about old Professor Griff. Yeah, I got his book. Uh, I ain't never read it though. Uh, I skimmed through it and I was like, I don't want to read this. No. Oh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I bought it it's it, because it's not really I'm more scholarship driven and you know it's not really it's not scholarship it's more of his experiences in hip hop you know through the years and things that he's seen you know uh you going to quarantine me Zutek? you you going to quarantine me hey, you might have contracted something about <laughs> contracted the <laughs> gone by now ain't it <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh man, that boy said, "Brother, panic with the panic pack." Hey man, you know panic is 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 frightened by the sight of Unc, because <laughs> that was another dude that was real big in Atlanta at one time. Like I said, Unc is responsible for cleaning up a lot of stuff, so. Yeah, I, I forgot about that film. Yeah, I, I forgot about it. Is he still doing anything? I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna even lie. You know, in 2013. Oh, no, Kobe, don't tell me you got a panic pack at the house. No, I ain't got no panic pack, but I, I, you know, I watched him and, and Bobby Hammett. You know, I, I, I got Bobby Hammett turned me on to, you know, to uh, Brother Panic, you know. So oh. that's how I get. And I used to watch some of his stuff. Like I said, man, we all got pseudo beginnings. And man, I was just trying like to wear us. I don't know wherever I was trying to find. I'm you 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 y'all to look at something. I'm in Mississippi. I'm in Mississippi. I'm in the, I'm in the right, but I'm saying right, but I've been born and raised here, man. So I mean there's there's no used to be pseudo. I was just about to say two tech, so you ain't gonna quarantine go. You just gonna quarantine me. I'm, I'm just keeping it real, man. I was just trying to find information wherever I can find it, cause I didn't have none. I couldn't go. I couldn't go to a, 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 a an event. We didn't have no events here. I couldn't go to an event. That's why, you, that's why you chew. That's why you chew all that old meat spit. That's why you spitting out all them bones, huh? Nice, no, man, no. Hey, but but it's it's a good lesson in this though, man, cause I talked to Unc about this. So where where I was where Kofi was, where a lot of us was, when we were just getting information from all these different sources and we didn't have the tools to discern whether it was right or wrong. That's where a lot of these celebrities are, man. A lot of these celebrities that come into consciousness, they just get, they get some books, they start reading, they doing just what we did, man. You know, so like, uh, for example, man, brother Nick Cannon, man. If you follow him on Instagram, He's all over the place. Look at the people he has on his show, man. He got everybody from Griff to Umar to 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 Dr. Craig Carr to Young Pseudo to, to all of these different people because he doesn't have the tools of discernment. He doing exactly the same things that we was doing. He just ain't got nobody to pull his coattail or no example to show him, you know, methodology. So in his mind, he's just trying to give, you know, he just trying to get the information out there, you know, but he don't understand, you know, uh, you know, the power of discernment through using tools and methodology. I did reach out to him, Sister Lakeisha. I ain't getting no response, but, you know, I even put out a whole video and tagged him in it. Um, so, you know, I tried, but, you know, you got to know somebody to get to those guys. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, he's in the same position and he's not the only one, man. You know, uh, T.I., you know, he's he says a bunch of stuff, but, you know, he ain't got the power of discernment either. You know, and, and it's a lot of guys out there that was in the same position that we was in yesteryear. But they, you know, they in that position today. And uh, I just wish it was a way, you know, we could, you know, group these guys together because like it or not, you know, this video ain't never gonna get the amount of views as uh them brothers' video is gonna get, you know. So I wish we could use them as sort of, sort of deploy them like you know weapons in the community, uh, 
if we could ever get that opportunity to uh, to sit down and talk with him. Um, this is what it is. Yes, pure black. Sean does sound like T.I. I've told him that many times. Her receipt, like him and everything. T.I. is an uneducated Sean. <laughs> You see how you, you see how you like to cover up your your uh now nah, I ain't gonna go there. You right, Kofi. Oh you don't know. do it. Don't do it. No, I ain't, I ain't gonna talk about do your, your uh pink. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, don't do it, bro. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna talk about it. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm gonna let you live live that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight I'm gonna let you live that one. Now look, look, blue, there you go. <laughs> now I'm too far now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, get that brother a hat. <laughs> 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 Hey, let me go. Hey, let me go. All right, LeBron, go ahead. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All I got to say is, if you get your wig, you're out the box. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the rule, man. That's the rule, man. I ain't taking that. <laughs> <laughs> tolerate a lot of stuff, man. I ain't tolerating no weeds, man. I'm <laughs> he can't practice that European culture, that Benjamin Franklin culture. No, man. It's, it's, no, no, man. Hey, man. Around here, man. Don't do no <laughs> <damn weed. laughs> I'm serious. Oh, but uh, so so you said the record straight that men don't wear wigs in Africa. That's what you're trying to tell me. Look, I know brothers wore extensions, but at least they had hair. <laughs> at least they had hair, man. I can't do the wigs, brother. Me neither, extensions neither. Nah, man. Nah, we, hey, let's put it like this West Africans, man. We West Africans. <laughs> we. <laughs> lead, lead them, lead them extensions and all that, Kim. <laughs> yep. So that's where you're gonna see it. At. We West Africans, man. I tell you what, boy. When I turned that corner, because my wife was with me, we turned that corner in that in that Cairo Museum. Boy, we seen all them wigs. I said, God, that was the day. Because I used to be on women by weaves and wigs. That was the day I let it go. That day <laughs> when I seen all them wigs. I said, God damn. I can't even say nothing no more. That was the day I put it down, boy. Oh, that's what I wanted to say, too. Um, we were talking about time period and dates uh, dealing with West Africa and obviously, you know, with Islam coming in and that special time right around the year 1000 CE, right? So one of the things that I like to do is I like to cross compare history as I'm looking at history. I don't like to just study what was going on. Like for instance, in West Africa, 1200 CE, because I know what was going on in Africa around that time in West Africa, at least dealing with the birth of this music that I love that is directly responsible for the influence in black culture and hip hop and R and B and blues and all of that. Um, but what was going on in other parts of the, of the world, like, the ones that was trying to colonize us behind the Arabs around that time was the Viking age. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with around the year 1000 current era, you know, you got a few years behind that, but at that same time that we was developing this beautiful music and stuff, you had people still shedding blood. Like they was just arriving on the planet. Like all they was doing was raping, robbing and pillaging and raiding. That was their culture. Like, I just want to point that out for people that, you know, we not that we don't fight in Africa and bloodshed not spilt on the continent. But I'm talking about an entire history of people is nothing but raiding, pillaging and robbing, period. That's all they do. Not just the Arabs who we talk about. I'm talking about other people around the world. That's all they were doing around this time where we're developing music. We're developing new dance styles. We're developing telling stories. 
we playing harps, you know, uh, still ain't found that monster rhythm, but you know, found plenty of us. Cross comparative history is definitely important to understand because you got to understand what's going on around the world simultaneously. Yeah, man. I think that it's, uh, I think that, you know, for serious people uh, that, that actually read um, to kind of understand what they read. And I think that people that actually just can hang on YouTube and watch a YouTube video or go back and watch a YouTube video because they don't have time to read. I think that they need more accurate information consistently um which goes back to ben <clears throat> ben's point about utilization like ti and um nick uh, maybe we should start tagging them i don't know if they'll recognize it or not like that but if we we tag them to things that will bring them to uh you know, certain information because to be honest, TI has to be either listening to someone or possibly picking up a book, uh, maybe potentially even, you know, um, watching some, some, what is that, uh, some old boy documentary, uh, the pseudo documentaries, Hidden Colors. And I think that uh, if we just keep pounding the, the pavement and hashtagging them or atting them and trying to get their attention on certain information that it may break through because you're right they re they're reaching millions of people fast like man they live button come on and next thing you know you know people scrolling their phones getting the notifications you know what i mean they locked in and ti even in his music you could tell that he's showing some type of growth in some areas because of certain things that he's saying. He's he's been steadfast in denouncing Christianity now. <laughs> he's been saying that you know the order the uh, order this stuff is you know comes from is rooted in Christianity and he don't want that. He don't accept that. So he's he's taking a different path. And then he says then he turns around and then he shows his ignorance in science and says something about vaccines, which he don't understand in the music. You know, not once, but in two separate songs. And uh, <clears throat> it's kind of gut-wrenching to hear that because, you know, people are mimicking that and it's easier to catch in the lyrics and it's adaptive in people's minds if they listen to the music. Not saying that the younger kids are really listening to it, but when I'm riding, I'm vibing, you know what I mean? We have, we have women, um, you know, in their thirties and 40 years of age, and maybe even older that are listening to TI's album and they are digesting what he's saying in those songs. And they, then they turn around and paired it on social media, Facebook or Instagram. And I don't have Instagram, so I don't know, but Facebook and say, you're not gonna get my baby a shot, you know? And even we have people who supposed to be teachers in the community or and or connected to PhDs and they're sharing posts about vaccines and frowning upon vaccines and things of that nature. So there's levels of ignorance that continue to overwhelm the black community, which which hinders us from growing and <clears throat> just takes us out of our element, our, our, uh, our element and our opportunity to evolve. And, you know, so, yeah, Corey, I think that's what we should start doing, man, is I think that we should make a conscious effort to, you know, when we're hashtagging our posts and things of that nature, let's hashtag Nick Cannon, let's hashtag T.I., uh, whichever one that'll bring up is, you know, bring up T.I., and you know, uh, T.I. expeditiously or whatever to try to see if we can pull, pull these rappers in and we're able to successfully pull one if you're able to pull one in you know what i mean that that's another level that our information can reach yeah king los is wild pseudo um that's why b dot is important 
to us and supporting B dot is important because as he elevates, like his clothing line, as he elevates, you know, we have to continue to make sure that he he is solid in, in a lot of his information because he'll discern and he doesn't mind being corrected and go back and learn. He'll even reach out and ask you questions on said subjects, especially when he in battle mode, because he's done that to me before where I've had a long conversation with B dot um, chatting with him about uh, one of his up and coming Christian, he was battling a Christian and we were just going back and forth about a, uh, a few things. And I was giving him information on that. He was, uh, that he needed, that he could refer to, that he could tie back to his bars. And you know what I mean? So he's trying to educate people through battle rap. So you want to kind of arm them people with everything. Uh Oh, Cujo peace, bro. See you just popping in. He tried to clown Lupe Fiasco about taking the vaccine. Yeah, see, and that's a whole nother thing. Like, you know, we got to educate him on, so he got to be more scientific. You know what I mean? Hell of a rapper. A good businessman, you know what I mean? Um, from what you see uh, of his life on social media, as far as the perspective of uh, his kids and stuff, family guy and all that, you know what I mean? We just got to do a better job with making sure that they know, because in his rap, he mentioned Tuskegee. And then this is this is a conversation that me and Brother Ben continue to have, like this this myth of uh, Tuskegee among our people. Like, what are we getting wrong? And then Ben says, well, hey, this, this movie here has the accurate story. I wonder how many of our people actually watched that, uh, this movie. And I'm like, man, I've seen the movie, but I don't know if people really watched that particular movie and got a really good understanding of that and that that's you know that's what people should be as far as um kofi you was in here already bro talking about the adding to the room but that's where we at with that man and um let me get back to that hey if any of y'all have not signed a petition to get the og out of jail I'm going to put in the chat, Matula Shakur, sign that right there. I just dropped the link in the chat. We want to kind of um, get as many signatures as possible. I don't know how effective it would be, but we, we need to be proactive in the representation of that. And uh, Let me speak on that briefly, Brother Sean. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Matula Shakur, Black Panther, um, partner of the late and great. Afini Shakur, uh, that makes, uh, he was actually, uh, I'm sorry, not partner. He was Tupac's grand, uh, Tupac's godfather. So he's of the Shakur lineage. Um, you know, acu acupuncturist, got a lot of young black men off of drugs, went to jail because of, you know, the Black Panther thing, did his time, but they still won't release him because they think he's a danger, is going to, um, you know, galvanize the youth to form another Black Panther Party, even though there's already another Black Panther Party. But that's why he's not being released. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to just do everything we can to help the elder out. And uh, he has fallen ill in, in jail. They, they, I don't know what he's ill from, but, um, you know, uh, Mama Marimba and Nee told me to my face, uh, you know, let's do what we can. So, you know, we're doing what we can. She speaks with him often. So, uh, you know, we're putting it out there, trying to get as many signatures on that thing as possible. So, uh, you know, hopefully it'll do something, man. Trying to move that needle. If people aren't familiar with the movie that I was referring to, I'll put the title in the chat. But I also put a link, website, where you can go and grab the title as well. If you got HBO, you can watch it on HBO On Demand because um, it is on demand. 
and uh, you get access uh, that movie and, and just get a a uh, theoretical perspective of the Tuskegee experiment and so on and so forth. So that's something you can rely on. Or for more additional information on that, there's actually a PDF of the actual core documents that take you all the way through it as well. If you Google it and get the right information, there's no reason for us to have to speculate or to assume that, you know, they were injected with syphilis. You know what I mean? And, you know, if we want to be angry about something, we need to be angry at the refusal of treatment, which was the real reason. And, you know, we want to get these people out there with that information so they know. I don't know if, you know, if anyone watched that and watched it in its entirety, but that's a good movie that's better than the status quo. Um, it goes against a um, hidden colors. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It goes against the hidden colors. A primary source goes against the hidden colors perspective of vaccines and things of that nature. Absolutely. Um, um, and Miss Evers is a real nurse. Yeah. This person that is being portrayed on the front, this black woman, is a real nurse. Miss Evers worked as a nurse at the Tuskegee Experiment. And what black people are probably not going to want to hear is... uh. Mrs. Evers went around recruiting black folks that she knew was sick for this experiment and she knew what was going to happen to them. She wasn't the only black person that was doing that. They were in on it. And it actually took a white guy to blow the whistle for this this uh, experiment to even go to, to the Senate for them to do an investigation and eventually go to trial. So we were complicit. Some of us were complicit in what was going on. And the fact that the people in the experiment were illiterate helped this experiment greatly because they were putting the experiment, its intentions, its findings in the daily newspaper. But nobody could read it. So they didn't know what was going on. There was actually a man in this experiment that escaped the experiment by joining the army. He joined the army around World War II. He got the penicillin shot. So he was cured. So he came back and tried to get some of his people in the experiment the same treatment at the uh, army hospital. But they were refused treatment because there was a list that was generated. There was a list that was generated with everybody that was in the experiment on this list. So they knew to refuse them treatment because they were a part of the Tuskegee experiment. These are things nobody ever talks about, right? Because we all are just repeating somebody's narrative that doesn't know anything. And the reason that that narrative even came about is people were going to this experiment and not telling their loved ones that they had syphilis. So they were going to this experiment and then dying. So naturally people thought that, you know, they did something to them. That this, this, this sort of folk story has spread through the years and now it's become a lie. Something much more sinister happened than them just getting syphilis. I would have actually rather preferred that than what I actually found out. Like Brother Sean was saying, they just let these people die. They lied to them from the get go. They lured them in under false pretenses. And I, but I do want to mention that the families did receive millions of dollars uh, and free health care for life um, to extend to their uh, siblings and descendants. And you can read about that on the CDC website. So that's something that's not mentioned either. Um, but like Brother Sean said, that's a good movie. The court documents is out there. Uh, we got so many sources on this. We don't need to continue to have this conversation. And for that to be the, you know, first kickback, pushback when people start talking about vaccines. But I'm going to sign off for the night, uh, gentlemen. Y'all be easy, man. It's good building with y'all as always, man. Uh, you know, I'll holler at y'all another time. Or double. Right. Huh? Back after power.